If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 4. The Lord instructed me in these celebration meetings. We preached last night on outpourings of supernatural power. I mean, it was a blessing. And of course, this morning, Kathy, in fact, I want y'all to see my preaching pardon in this celebration meeting. Kathy, stand up and give her a hand clap. There she is. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the title of her sermon this morning, the devil tried to knock the microphones out, but it, he, she got through was, a, what? A, satisfying your cravings. Glory to God, a craving coming on you for God. Think about that, glory to God. Park anywhere just to go hear God. Some of y'all did that tonight. <laughs> Down the streets, anywhere, glory to God. And I add a little bit to it, and tomorrow morning she'll be ministering again, and I'll minister in the morning, and of course tomorrow night, We'll close out the meeting with a, just a knock-down, drag-out power. But the Lord said in one of these services, and I don't know why Friday night, maybe next celebration, it might be Thursday night, next, or it may be Saturday morning. God wanted me to deal with giving and sowing and reaping in a message. I want everyone to look at me, and I want you to understand something. One of the greatest problems in America and in the Christian circles today is debt. We all know that. Debt is a stranglehold. It gives other people power over you. Now, some people think and some people preach that borrowing is a sin, and I don't believe that. And the reason why I know it's not a sin is because the Bible said God made Abraham the lender. Now, if borrowing was a sin, then God would have never made Abraham a lender. But what God wants you to be is a lender instead of a borrower, so because the lender is in the power seat. They determine how you are going to pay. And America has made the world very easy to be in debt. It's called credit cards. Revolving charge, which means you'll revolve for the rest of your life. You can buy a washing machine for $18 a month for 332 years. Because the interest on it monthly is greater than the whole thing, and you'll never pay it off. But it's designed to make you think that you've got to live in debt all your life, and that's simply not true. Now, the Bible deals with sowing and reaping. But it's sad to say that the church understands sowing. Most people understand giving. But I, I mean this sincerely. I honestly believe that about 98% of the people that give don't understand reaping. Because all your life and all Christians in Christianity from, from the beginning... That Jesus came, they told people, give. And you see him on television, won't you help me? Won't you help me? Oh, God, help me. If I don't hear from you today, we're going off the air. Well, go off the air, boy. <laughs> go on off, for God's sake. Usually when me and Kathy see that, we go, hey, we're going to get his time next week. <laughs> and the reason why a lot of people don't understand is they understand the scriptures of giving, and they love giving, but they do not understand reaping. Because some people have abused the word prosperity. It's all over the Bible. Everywhere. you got to understand something. God had intended to get Israel in the land that flows with milk and honey in 11 days. Some people say 21 days, but I found out in the original Hebrew, in 11 days they could have done it. Now, they didn't get there. Egypt constitutes the land of not enough. They went to Sinai to the land of just enough. But God was trying to get them over to the land that flows with milk and honey, the land of more than enough. And notice that when he talked to Joshua, he said, cross this Jordan, boy. Come on, there's, there's milk and honey on the other side, and cactus and, and, and bugs on this side. Now, I heard that land of not enough, land of more than enough, land of uh, just enough, land of more than enough. I heard Brother Savell speak a little bit on that. It really ministered to me. And I got to thinking, why aren't people out of debt? And how come the wealth of the wicked hasn't yet been given to the righteous. Now, I'm going to take a bunch of different sermons on giving, and I'm going to put them all together. So I don't know where we're going with this thing. But if you listen to me, you people listen to me by telling me, you listen to me. Listen to me, and I get very serious about this, because this is 99% of most of your problem. You see, that holds you back from the visions and dreams that God wants you to do for being the person you want to be. And because some people abuse this, immediately a pendulum swung all the way to the other side saying, well, 
You got to give, but don't expect anything in return. That is totally unscriptural and is a sin before God. Because the Bible, as long as the, the Bible says as long as the earth remained, there would be seed time, harvest time. Now, if you're not believing for harvest, then you are breaking a law of God. Well, Brother Jesse, and I'm going to say it right up front. Do you believe in giving the get? Yeah! But I'm not saying this. Oh, Lord, give me this. And oh, God, give me this. Oh, Jesus, give me this, baby, Lord. That, 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 that's just the flesh. You know it's flesh. I know it's flesh. I ain't dealing with that. I am dealing with sowing, reaping, understanding, giving. You never know the true worth of money until you share it with others. Then you realize the value of money. Money is, has no value to it at all unless you buy something with it. It can't feed you. It can't clothe you. It's paper. You can burn it and give you a little heat. But notice, it's of no value whatsoever until you spend it. And we determine what that is. Are you at Luke, uh, excuse me, Mark chapter 4? Mark chapter 4, verse 13 is one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. Jesus talking to his disciples, and he says this, and he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? Or in other words, Peter, James, John, come here. If you don't understand this, you don't understand anything when it comes to the Word of God. Now, what parable was he talking about? The parable of the sower. Sowing and reaping. Now, most people hear the word sowing, but they don't understand the word reaping. Now, they don't mind telling you, bless God, we givers. But when they start getting blessed, they get a little nervous. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. We got enough money to buy that house over there. And we want it, but maybe somebody, a lot of ministers are very guilty of this. Oh, my God, if we buy that house, people get mad at us. Well, they're judging you by what somebody else did, which is totally wrong. You see what I'm saying? Because if a person's heart's right, you're going to put God first in everything you do. But you've got to understand something about God. He's going to put you first in everything he does. See what I'm saying? And the first thing you think of is the scandals. And a lot of people back to it, oh, sell my car. I'm not selling my car. I need that car. And I didn't buy that car to show off. I bought that car, I bought that car so I wouldn't have to walk. <laughs> you understand? Now, let me tell you something. Some people want you to see. You ever know something when you pick up an offering, you pastors, you'll see a $100 bill laid flat in the bucket. $1 bill crunched up real strong. <laughs> $20 bill kind of folded halfway. $5 bill, two halves. 10 about a, a, a half, one and a half. Dollar bill, make a ring out of it. Bird, crunched up. Isn't that amazing? They don't want you to see, but now if it's a hundred dollar bill, lay that sucker flat, boy. <laughs> Let everybody see that baby. Thousand dollar check, don't put that in an envelope, son. Bring that in a silver platter. <laughs> Let me make this announcement. Write this down. It's not a sin to be seen giving. Write that down. I want to teach you tonight. Now, I am a preacher. We may get to preaching in just a few minutes, but let me do a few things, because this is going to help you. And you say, but I'm doing okay. How about your grandkids? How about the third generations? The Bible said a good man makes an inheritance for his children's children. So if you think you just took care of yourself, you ain't stopped yet. You hadn't even done what God said. I'll tell you something else. We're going to get into the blessings of all the families and the nations of the earth, and you ain't done that neither. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? So it's not a sin to be seen giving. But there is a problem giving to be seen. Write that down. It's not a sin to be seen giving. But a problem arises when you give to be seen. Because that's the only reward you're ever going to get. But if people see you giving, they see you opening up your heart just like God opened every heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God is a giver. Whosoever believeth shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. Let me say it again. It's not a sin to be seen giving. But a problem arises when you give to be seen. Now let's deal with this parable that Jesus said. And it's Mark chapter 4. Verse 3, the Bible says, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower. 
Notice the word sower is singular. Sower, not sowers. Sower, one person. Behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and divided it up. That's the first time this sower, not sowers, sows. He's a giver because he's a sower. Watch this. And it came to pass, verse 4, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and divided it up. Verse 5, and some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. Immediately it sprang up because it had no depth in the earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Now, that's the second time this sower, not sowers, sows. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. That's the third time this sower, not sowers, sows. Don't let your weeds choke your seeds. Now, verse 8, and others fell on good ground. Watch this. And did ye of fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Now that's the fourth time this sower, singular, not sowers, sows. Four times. Now this is the parable that Jesus is talking about. I had a theologian one time tell me, now the Lord was not talking about economy in that verse. I said, brother, you can't eat 30,000 acres of corn. You, I mean, I mean, you may be able to eat a lot, but you ain't going to eat no 30,000 acres of corn. You might eat one ear, two ears, three ears. But when God bless you 36 and 104, what you're going to do is fill yourself up. Then you're going down there to the farm place to sell your product. When Jesus moved on them fishes and they gave their lives for the ministry. And fish came flying, just swimming up there. I give my life, skin me, gut me, fry me, eat me. My life is yours, Lord. But Peter couldn't receive it. And then fish said, see you later, boy. God's dealing with economy here. Now, God deals with the multiplication system. You deal with the denominator. You determine how God blesses you in terms of how much by the denomination that you pick. And I'm not talking Baptist and Methodist. I'm talking about dollars here. Then God adds 36 and 100 fold to what you can believe for. Then in verse 13, he said, and he said unto them, No, you're not this parable. How then will you know all parables? Or if you don't get this, you don't get anything. Now notice the man sold in verse 4, sold in verse 5, sold in verse 7, sold in verse 8. But the thing that I want to submit to you tonight is this. This man was a giver, right? But he lost verse 4. He lost verse 5. He lost verse 7. Now he got blessed on verse 8. See, I submit to you tonight that you can give to God and lose. Why? Because you're not a sower, but a thrower. I'm spitting all over myself up here. I saw it come flying out. I believe I spit all over a preacher last night, glory to God. Did I spit all over you? Well, it's baptism, brother, baptism. Baptism. I apologize for that. I'll get your suit clean. Uh, yeah, get me some water, Joe. Put me some water up here, because I don't want something, fly, something big and white come flying out. Praise God after a while. <laughs> all right, back to the work. Praise God. So notice this. I want you to look at me. Now, don't look at Joe. He's just going to get water. <laughs> Joe, they're looking at you. Glory to God. Look good, Joe. People want to know what's going on. What kind of water is he drinking? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. You put that right there. Now, if I kick it over, just go get another one, okay? Sometimes I like to do that. Hallelujah. I want to submit to you that this man lost 75% of his seed. Now, how did the wealth of the sinner get into the hands? By losing your seed. Now, you notice he didn't ever retrieve that seed. Now, thank God he got blessed 36 and 100 fold on verse 8. Thank God for that. But that still tells you he lost verse 4, verse 5, and verse 7. Now, how many have you lost? Maybe the reason why that the wealth of the sinner hadn't been given to you because you lost verse 4, verse 5, verse 7, and every once in a while you got blessed on verse 8. And you couldn't figure out why. And here's why, because you never named your seed. If you don't know what you're sowing, how are you going to know your harvest? I mean, there's no form in his right mind drive his pickup truck to a feed store and ask some seeds. Say, what you planting today? Well, I don't know, bless God. Just throw a sack of seed back there and we're going to put it, put it in the ground and just believe God. Well, he won't even know what he's, he's planting. Somebody can walk up to him and say, that's not your corn, that's my corn. Yeah, but it's on my land. Yeah, but how, what kind of seed did you sow? But I don't know. Well, I sold corn on your land. I'll give you a lease price on it, but the corn's mine. 
Now, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to know when you get there. And that's the reason why Satan's got rich. Do you know the devil? Everything he's got's been stolen. That he's a thief. Guess who it's stolen from? Your ancestors. You, and if you don't teach your children, he'll steal from your descendants. The title of this message is given the ultimate trip. I just got it. Because that is the very heart of God. God has said, first thing he did, I want to give. And he picked his most prized possession, Jesus. Now, I want to submit something to you. Jesus didn't die on the cross 2,000 years ago. That was the death of his physical body. Jesus died as the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. Before the foundation of the earth, Jesus was, was died. That means God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost had a, had a spiritual meeting. There was no universe. There was no nothing. And Jehovah said, I'll tell you what, I'm in the creating mood. And I believe I'm going to create a universe. And, and you're blessed. God, how you done? It's his business. And I'm going to create moons and stars and galaxies. And I'm going to do 100 billion galaxies that they can see, but there's more than that than they can see. And I'm going to put 100 billion planet, moons, and stars in each one of them. And they're going to try to get to the end of the universe, but they'll never figure it out. But you know, I'm going to create something better than all that. I'm going to create man in my own image. And the angel went, oh, they just suck breath. Someone created in the image of God with the same spirit, soul, and body. You mean like yourself, God? Yes, to you I created servants, but then I'm going to create sons that serve. Well, where are they going to sit in heaven? Right next to me. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, and you. That's why the devil has caused preachers homiletically, hermeneutically, philosophically, theologically to tell you you can't receive, receive that position because Satan could never get there. That's why he hates you. You got something higher than him. He's got hell and you got heaven. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? He said, and the angels went, they just gasped for breath. <gasps> wow. You mean you're going to create somebody in your image? Breathe your life? Give them that Zoe stuff? Yes. Give them freedom of choice? Yes. But God said, you know, Holy Ghost, you know Jesus. They're going to mess up and sin. And I love them so much that I want to bring them back. And Jesus stood up in the meeting. This is before anything was ever created. And he said, Lord, my father, I lay down my life as a lamb led to the slaughter. And the Holy Ghost was keeping the minutes. And he went, okay, Jesus, dead. <laughs> Next order of business. God finished. God finishes. Now, begin. By his stripes you were healed, right? Yeah, but I am sick. Begin. You know why God doesn't worry about nothing? Because he's finished. He knows the end result. Ain't no use to sweat. You know what's going to happen. You, you can prove that with your children. When your children going, oh, God, I don't know if we're going to make it. You've already been through that. You're going to make it. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to make it. Oh, you, trust me. You're going to make it. Oh, Lord. And you know the parents ain't sweating nothing because you've already finished. Same thing with your healing. God finishes. Now begin. That's what he told Adam. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, begin. You notice he did not create a whole bunch of people at one time. He only created one man, one woman. You know, he was concerned he's finished. Now he said, Adam, begin. He saw Jesse. Come on, Adam. I want you to see this. Giving. And he put something in man, he put something in woman called creative ability. Not just because you can form a body in your body, but what happens is you form a spirit in your body. And God is spirit. So what happens here, this man loses 75% of his seed. 75% of it. Now thank God he got blessed. Now what happened to that 75%? The devil gave it to his kids. And preachers got up and began to preach, well, bless God, you can't expect anything in return. Before you know it, the devil's kids are lending you your money and charging you interest on your money. You know, a lot of people give God a lot of credit, but very little cash. There's some people come to a meeting such like this, and I don't mean it's derogatory, but I'm under the anointed city, and they'll put $5 but won't think twice to go to the show and spend 35 bucks at the popcorn place. 
especially if you got four or five kids, you're going you're to spend more than that. But they think, well, bless God. It's free. Yes, it is. Salvation is free to you tonight. But it definitely isn't cheap. It cost Jesus his life. So before the foundations of the earth, Jesus already was crucified. 2,000 years ago, his body was buried. But three days later, he rose it up or raised it up. And he's walking today. So I want you to see this, keep in this mind. This is what Jesus is trying to tell his boys. No, you're not this parable? How then will you know all parables? Now go to Genesis chapter 1 real quick. Go to page 1 of the Bible. Page 1, like Harvey. Paul Harvey says, page 1, page 2. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to deal with giving the ultimate trip tonight. God is doing something wonderful here. Jehovah. Let's find out if Jesus believes exactly the same way his father believed. I'd like to know about that. Let's see if he does. Watch this. Verse 26, and God said, you ever notice when God start talking, things start happening. And God said, let us make man in our image. Stop right there. Let us make man in our image. Now, do you know when most people think that image is? <laughs> Call a banana. <laughs> now, we laugh at that, but they're teaching your children that in schools. But God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. Why is everybody so different? Because God is a multifaceted God. You got some people that'll go, <laughs> Whoa, glory, yes, what a service. And some people go, amen. <laughs> when I see that, I go, likeness. Because God is an awesome God. A raging thunder at times, and yet sometimes a still, small voice. A powerful wind. God is so dramatic. <laughs> He's an artiste. He really is. God does things showy. When he opened and divided the Red Sea, he could have just went. But he didn't do that. Jehovah came out there, Pharaoh looking, and the Bible said, with a blast of his nostrils, he blew his nose and the Red Sea just hooked him, boy. <laughs> Traumatic. Go over the Acts chapter 2. Suddenly there's a sound from heaven. God didn't come in and say, hello, I'm God. I've come to baptize you. Domina de patria filio, espiritu santo. Domina de patria filio, espiritu santo. I'm not making fun of anybody, just simply the truth. God didn't come and say, excuse me, quiet, please, I'm here. Uh -uh. Suddenly, they're praying, they're quiet. Oh, Lord. Ooh. I didn't know they had tornadoes in Jerusalem, yeah. So noisy that the people in the outer courts heard them. God coming to town. Fire clicking from his heels. Filled him with the Holy Ghost. Jumping, shouting, and screaming. Whoa, God's in town. God didn't come in like this. And he's not an old man with white hair. <laughs> he's God. You want to know what he looks like? <laughs> I'm made in his image. And in his likeness, he's so big, but he's small enough to live inside of me. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then he gives him a gift. And let him have dominion. Dominion. Let him have domain. Over what? Fish, sea, fowl, cattle, earth, creeping things. You notice the word woman is not in there. <laughs> Shout, ladies. <laughs> but Adam wanted one. 
God gave him a hint. Woman. 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 In fact, I don't doubt that Adam was walking with Cain and Abel one day. And as they were walking, they went past the Garden of Eden, and that flaming cherub was there with that sword. And Adam said, Cain, Abel, come here. See that tree over there? Yeah, Dad. That's where your mama ate us out of a house and home, boy, right there. <laughs> okay, it's a little funny. All right. <laughs> Boo. No, Eve, what are you laughing for? You a woman. <laughs> no, what happened was, Adam made us out of a house and home. They never got out till Adam ate. Eve was enjoying herself. This is good stuff. But when Adam ate, sin fell. Thought I was going to kick that, didn't you? Like that. So God, verse 7, created man in his own image. In the image of God created to him, male and female created he them. Now, can you imagine when Adam saw Eve? You got to understand that ain't no long, I don't know how long you've been looking at cows. <laughs> Deer, tigers, lions, elephants. Bobby named over 500,000 species of animals. That's a smart man. He saw them walking off together. Elephants' trunks locked together. Just walking. He's thinking, that's so nice. I think I've been cut short here. Something wrong. <laughs> God said, Let, it's not good for man to be alone. So he puts him to sleep. Now, that's a thing Adam never done before. He's sitting there going, <laughs> wow, man. Shouldn't eat them leaves yesterday. <laughs> I've seen people do that when I'm preaching. They're going. <laughs> One time I was preaching. I said, how many of y'all want to go to hell? And the man went, I do. <laughs> Wife said, quit sleeping, boy. You just went to hell while you're sleeping. <laughs> he falls asleep. Wakes up. There's a little woman. What's happening, big boy? He sees her, he goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. He gets so excited, he gets spiritual and starts prophesying. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Then will a man leave his mama and his daddy and cleave to you. Come here, girl. Lord of God. You can hear the animals. You see what Adam got? Look what Adam got. Wow. He said, but why is that so exciting? He never had a mama and a daddy. He just prophesied. Woo! <laughs> Women have great power. I've said this in many sermons. I got it one time sitting on the front porch of my house years and years ago. I believe when God created man and woman, he had dogs and cats on his mind. Because men are like dogs. Hur, 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 hur. And when I'm like cat. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Now you notice you can touch a dog anytime you want. <laughs> you don't touch a cat like that. You go to touch a cat. <laughs> ah. You don't touch that cat till that cat's ready. Now, a dog, you can wake him up in a dead sleep. <laughs> Hell, just wag it. Wag so hard, he wag his own body around. Bless God. Got his tongue hanging out. Spit coming off of it. You ever seen spit come off a cat's tongue? But a cat will get an ocean in her head. She'll just get up. You don't know what she's going to do. Walk slow. Come right up to you and go, ooh. <laughs> that old dog, ah! 
How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, I know. That's a fact, brother. And you notice most dogs live outside and most cats live inside. Cats own the house, dog own the yard. Cat eat the good food, the dog eat the garbage. So he gives this man dominion. But he's trying to tell you, man, get out the yard, go in the house. But there's a cat there. <laughs> Cats get a look on their face. They, they, they talk to you with their face. Now, dog, you got to slap him to make it mad. You make him mad. Ha, ha. Then you go. <laughs> Very easy. Now, go to verse 29. God said, behold. You know what the word behold means? Look, Adam, 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 come here. Adam, look, Adam. Hey, Adam, look. That's what behold means. <laughs> when you tell your husband to see something, you don't go, honey, honey, behold. You say, honey, look. Behold, now watch this. I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the tree, fruit of a tree yielding seed. Now watch this. To you it shall be for meat. Another translation says for provision. What? 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 God is saying, Adam, 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 Adam. Come here. Sow this, boy. If you don't sow this, you're going to starve to death, son. You understand? He makes him sow seed. Now, here's the kicker. Before the fall. Look, look, look in your Bible. Sin has not yet reigned in the earth. God's got given on his mind, sowing, reaping. Sin has not yet entered. The old snake hadn't given up his body for the Lucifer to take. And God says, I'm going to make you a sower, and you're going to be a reaper. Notice that's before the fall. Giving, receiving. Isn't that amazing? Now, when you understand that, he told him what it was, and he told him to plant it or name that seed and believe God. The word whatsoever is a very powerful word. It encompasses all human activity. Do you know when you think thoughts, you sow seeds? That's why God said, think on these things. Whatsoever you lovely, just, good report, and good. You see, when you give with thoughtlessness, it is the beginning of great loss in your life. See, verse 4, verse 5, and verse 7 were given with thoughtlessness. What does that mean? I like Brother Jesse, so I'm going to give him. That's a thoughtless seed give to his ministry. Because you didn't give with purpose. And Corinthians said, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Now, you know, I very seldom ever preach on prosperity and money and finance. I'm an evangelist. But I begin to notice, God, it's time for your people to be blessed. And many of you are great givers, but thoughtless givers at times. Because somebody moved you with an emotional financial pull with a tear in the eye and a bloated baby's belly. Now, bless God, I believe in feeding people. Don't misunderstand me. But you know, you don't have to show me that for my compassion to come forward. The thing I want to get to you here is that God instituted giving and receiving before Lucifer, before the devil ever got into man's business. Now, God hadn't changed his mind because if you go back to Mark chapter 4, You'll find out, no, you're not this parable. How then will you know all parables? Now, the reason why God set up this system, let's find out the reason. Why would he set up this system? I mean, you know, why? Well, let's go over to Genesis chapter 12 real quick. Y'all enjoying this? Genesis chapter 12. God sets up this system as long as the earth remained to be seed time and harvest time. Now, you see, watch this. Verse, chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, this is before he was Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Genesis 12, verse 1. How many of y'all believe Abraham did that? Hold your hand up. Not a blessing? You're wrong. 
He missed God twice in that verse. Why? Let's read it again. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Who did he take with him? Who? Who? Lot. But God told him to get away from his nephew. But no, no, no. Abraham liked Lot. Like his nephew. God said, Get away from your family. How many of you would like God to tell you that? <laughs> Don't lift your hand for God's sake. But Lot said, hey, Uncle Abe, Uncle Abe, Uncle Abe, come on, man, take me home, please, please, please. Now, Lot produced strife in Abraham's situations. And if you notice something about God, God would not speak about great covenant promise to Abraham until Lot got away from him. When Lot walked off, God said, Abraham, look to the north, and look to the south, look to the east, and look to the west. Boy, in every place you put your foot, I'll give it. Why did he wait for Lot to leave? Because you can't do nothing when strife's in your camp. Now, Lot, thinking he had the better of the deal, pitched his tent towards Sodom. That's what it says in the Bible. The next time you hear about Lot, he's in the middle of Sodom. Now, let me show you something. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. Charge you more than you want to pay. He goes to Sodom, a rich man. He comes out of Sodom, and a poor man loses his family except his two daughters. Don't play with the devil. He'll kill you. He is a serial killer. Don't play with him. That means backsliding. You're dealing with a serial killer. He will kill you. That's why you stay under the covenant of God. He will play you like a cat playing a mouse, but he's going to bust your head. People that have snakes for pets are going to get bit. Snakes don't like people. You can see it in their eyes. They're sticking their tongue at you. Man, get out of here. They can feel your vibrations and your heat. They don't like you. He gums out a poor man. Now, you know why he went towards Sodom? Because the grass looked green. The greener the grass, the greater the deception. Or like Irma Bombach says, grass is always greener over the septic tank. <laughs> and you may think, bless God, I'm leaving this church and I'm going over that church. Hey, they got manure piles over there too. You just can't see them. They planted some green grass over them. You're going to get your feet wet. Notice this. That's the first time he misses God. And from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. He didn't do that neither. He waited till his father died. God didn't tell him to do that. He said, get out of town. But Lord, I'm 75 years old. I'm getting my social security check. You want me to leave? Where are we going? Move, boy. Go ye. Now watch this. And I will make of thee a great nation. And his wife couldn't have children. And I will empower to bless thee, or empower to prosper. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Now, notice that. That's where 99% of, of Christians stay. They, they love that state. Uh, seed Abraham. I'm the blessing of Abraham of mine. I'm the seed of Abraham. And I'm with 99 out of 100 heathens are there. That's the lifestyle of the rich and famous. How do you know that? Read it with me again. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Brother, wherever there's fame, there's fortune. Think about that. Get famous, and somebody want to write a book about you. Don't never uh, draw your life down to the level of a transaction. Devil don't care. He'll bury you in a sack of money. He's not interested in your body. He's interested in your soul. Don't sell yourself for that cheap, because you're worth way more than that. He says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and make your name great. Now, notice the reason for it. And thou shalt be a blessing. Now, you notice that when you first get saved, all you think about yourself. <laughs> you first get saved, God bless me, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> bless me, thank you, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus, bless me, bless me. You do little gambling games with them bread boxes of promises called scriptures that you got on your counter. <laughs> and you're better off going to a Chinese restaurant and get a fortune cookie on that. My scripture for today, and that ain't your scripture for today. This is your scripture for today. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. 
Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.